Welcome, you have found the kids service for North Park Community Church for the very first week in August. I can't believe that it's August already. July has just flown by, flown by. It's a very odd expression. It's not like the month of July grew wings and it flew away. No, it's just a saying, right? That means that July went by quickly. Well, anyways, I hope you're having a wonderful summer. What have you been up to? What have you been up to? Okay, on the count of three, I want everybody to tell me the most amazing thing that you've done so far this summer. I'm gonna count down from three so you have a chance to think about it, and then I want you to shout out as loud as you can the most amazing thing that you've done this summer so far. Okay, here we go. In three, two, one. Wow! Those were some amazing things. I'm excited for you. I'm also excited that we're starting a brand new month here in children's ministry. That means we're gonna have a new theme, we're gonna have a new character trait, we call that sometimes a life app, we're gonna have a new verse, and I'm excited to tell you that we're going to have some new people here on the screen. I want to introduce you to Leah and Cody, and they are two young adults who are joining us on staff here at North Park Church for the next many months. And so they're gonna be right here on our video sometimes. Um, and hopefully when we get together pretty soon and see each other on site, you'll see Leah and Cody there too. And I'm really excited to have them along. So welcome Cody and Leah and welcome to you. Thanks for coming. You know, this month in August, we're gonna be talking about wisdom and pretty soon we're going to get to the service. But I wanted to put something here for your ears to listen to so that you can hear it again later. In this month's new song, they say these lyrics. Listen to this. They say this. I need a solution. When I don't know what to do, I run to you. Who do you think the song is about? You're right. It's about our great, big, amazing God. I need a solution. I run to you. When I don't know what to do, I run to you. And that is how we're going to start learning about wisdom. So if you have a Bible, why don't you get it out? and then you can be ready to follow along or to look up this month's verse. Maybe you're using your family or your parents um, phone or a tablet and you have an app that you could open up to the Bible verses as well. So you should get that open and ready. And if you want to know ahead of time where today's story is coming from in a few minutes, it's in the book of Luke. Matthew, Mark, Luke, in the first three books of the New Testament. Remember, the New Testament is kind of the second half of the Bible, and you want to find the book of Luke. Ask somebody at home to help you find the book of Luke and the big number two, because chapter two is where today's story is coming from. So if you've just joined us for the first time or you haven't been here in a long time, here's how the service is going to go. When I'm done talking, then we're gonna have a music intro, a guest host named Haley, we're gonna have our video story, and then Haley's gonna come back. And when all of that is over, I'll be back for just a few words at the end, okay? It's an amazing service, and I'll see you on the other side of it, okay?
when you need to find something. Maybe you think really hard about where you last had it. Then you look everywhere. Up, down, inside, outside. If you still can't find it, you probably ask someone. Mom, where's my retainer? And most of the time, you find it. Unless it accidentally got dropped in here. But there is one thing you can always find. One thing that's always worth searching for. Wisdom. You won't find it under your bed or in the bottom of your backpack. But whenever you need some answers, you can turn to God. Please help God. I don't know what to do. You can find it written down in the pages of God's word. Wise people see danger and go to a safe place. You can find it when you talk with wise people, like a parent or small group leader. As you grow in wisdom, it becomes easier to discover what you should do and do it. God can always help you figure it out. The more you learn to make wise choices, the more people around you will see God at work in you. That's why wisdom is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Whenever I need some answers, God, I turn to you. You're chasing after me it makes me want to run to where you are God, you make this journey worth it I give you all my heart When I don't know what to do You help me figure it out God, I run to you When I need a solution I have no doubt
adventures, it's me, Haley, or as I am known in treasure hunting circles, Arizona Haley. Or just Haley is fine. That's also fine. Um, today we're hunting for treasure, not just any treasure, mind you, the treasure of wisdom. Wisdom is finding out what you should do and doing it. Now, you may be thinking, wisdom doesn't sound like much of a treasure, but treasure can come in all shapes and sizes. Like this piece of pottery. It doesn't look like much, but if you look closer, closer, closest, there. If I had to guess, I'd say this artifact is probably a few thousand years old. Phoenician, <clears throat> probably. These markings suggest that this pot could be of Carthaginian origin. Well, some archeologists had to travel a long way to find this fragment. Who can say how much this piece is worth? Hmm? I'm thinking, 14, 15, that seven dollars and forty-nine cents. Oh, uh, it looks like our archaeologist friend didn't have to travel so far after all. You see, you can find treasure anywhere. You can find it halfway across the world, or you can find it at Frank's Pottery Emporium. Wisdom can be like that. For some wisdom, you may have to dig really deep or travel really far. But other times, like in today's story, wisdom is closer than you think. Ooh, I wonder what era this is from, hmm? Oh, oh this is just my coffee. Hmm, <laughs> oh, now that's what I call treasure. I'll see you soon when I am much more caffeinated. Bye. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired, by the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. When God sent his very own son, Jesus, to earth, angels shouted the good news. Fear not, I bring you good news of great joy. Shepherds and wise men journeyed to visit Jesus. And later, Mary and Joseph hurried to Egypt with their young son to keep him safe from King Herod. But Jesus wasn't always a baby or a young child. We don't know much about his early years, but he had to learn to walk and talk just like every other child. Mama. He probably learned from Joseph how to hammer nails and smooth pieces of wood for tables and wheels. We do know one very important story from the time Jesus was a boy. One of Jesus' followers, Luke, wrote it down many years later. He begins, every year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And when Jesus was 12 years old, they went up to the feast as usual. Lentils, water skins, extra sandal straps. Jesus, run and tell your father we're packed and ready to leave. Yes, mother. The trip from their home in Nazareth to Jerusalem took several days. Friends and family traveled together. Jesus likely spent the day with his cousins and friends, finding his parents at dinner time. I brought sticks for the fire. I'll start this too. We should reach Jerusalem by noon tomorrow. We don't know what Jesus thought or felt when he saw the city of Jerusalem perched on the rocky hillside ahead. Years later, he would enter the city to the shouts of cheering crowds. But for now, Jesus was just a boy celebrating Passover with his family. You remember where your cousins live, right? We're staying with them again. I can find it. All week, families celebrated with relatives. Together, they enjoyed the Passover feast. You, O oh Lord our God, have given us festival days for joy in remembrance of the departure from Egypt. Blessed are you, O Lord our God. 
When the feast was over, Mary and Joseph packed and began their trip home along the crowded roads. At the end of the day, they stopped to set up camp. Jesus, can you start the cooking fire? Jesus? I thought I saw him with... No, that was before we left the city. Mary and Joseph searched through the nearby family, settling down for the evening. Have you seen Jesus? Not since he gave me the last potato pancake yesterday evening. No one's seen him. Since Jerusalem. We, we left, left him in the city. Frantic, Mary and Joseph hurried back to Jerusalem to search for their missing son. They immediately checked the home where they had been staying. Very sorry, but I haven't seen him. Mary and Joseph crisscrossed the entire city. He loved the honey cakes from that bakery. Excuse me, have you seen a 12-year-old boy about this tall? Dark brown robe, hair kind of sticks out over his ears. Yes, yes, like that. Sorry, haven't seen you. They may have checked the swimming hole or the stables, but Jesus was nowhere to be found. So Mary and Joseph paced the streets at wit's end. He's just never gone off like this. I don't think he's here. We've searched the whole city. Everywhere except... As Mary and Joseph turned the corner, high white walls rose ahead of them. The, the temple. temple! We'll check the courtyard. Just in case. The courtyard was filled with visitors still in the city for Passover. As they circled the open space, Mary froze. Joseph, there! Just ahead, they saw their son. Jesus was sitting with a group of teachers, listening and asking questions. Teacher, isn't it always right to be kind, even if it means giving money to a beggar on the Sabbath? The teachers nodded in agreement and amazement, but Mary and Joseph rushed forward. Jesus! Son, why have you treated us like this? Grabbing her boy, Mary hugged Jesus so hard she nearly squeezed the air out of him. Your father and I have been worried about you. We've been looking for you everywhere. Why were you looking for me? Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? All I know is no more stunts like this, okay? Jesus returned to Nazareth with his parents, obeying everything they asked of him. As he grew, he grew wiser and stronger. He also became more and more pleasing to God and to others. You wanna know why wisdom is such a treasure? Because we have so many choices to make in our lives. Wisdom can help us know what to do and when to do it, what to say and how to say it, where to go, who to hang out with, all the choices. Wisdom is a very valuable treasure. So where do we find wisdom? When Mary and Joseph were searching all over for Jesus, they found him in the temple asking questions and listening to wisdom from the teachers. So maybe we can search for wisdom from our church leaders. We can tell them how we're feeling and ask them questions when we're not sure of something. Or maybe we can search for wisdom from someone in our family. Your family probably knows you better than anyone, and they can help you make tough decisions in a way that no one else can. And there's another place that we can search for wisdom. Ta -da! The Bible is full of God's wisdom. Maybe you have one that looks like this, or maybe you can find a Bible app on someone's phone, and then you should take some time to read it, or have someone read it to you. Some people spend their lives searching for wisdom in the Bible. That's because wisdom is worth searching for. That's the one thing to remember today. Wisdom is worth searching for. Travel the world if you can, or look in your own home, but keep searching for wisdom. Valuable treasure awaits! Like this, Etruscan urn shard. Ah! Hopefully that wasn't too valuable. Well, I will see you next time on our next adventure. <laughs> I really hope we have some Etruscan glue.
Wasn't that a great story today? Our Lord and Savior Jesus, the one who is God's son, he also needed to grow in wisdom. And if Jesus needed to grow in wisdom when he was a child, you bet that we definitely need to grow in wisdom as children and as grown-ups. Do you know that there are still times when I don't know what I should do? And guess who I ask? My mom. That's right. When I don't know what to do sometimes or I need guidance, I still ask my mom. And I'm not a kid anymore, am I? No. So that means that going to our parents or other, other godly adults, coming right here to church or reading our Bible and getting to know God even more are just some of the ways that we can grow in wisdom. And remember, my friends, being wise means finding out what you should do and doing it. It's not the same thing as being smart, which is just knowing information. It's totally different. Wisdom is knowing what you should do and also doing it. Those are two different things, smart and wise. I hope you'll remember that. So I want you to know that the way to get wisdom is asking God. And that is actually our verse this month. So if you still have your Bible handy, you can now turn to the book of James. And remember friends, if you don't know where to find the books in your Bible, you just go to the front to the table of contents and find the name that you're looking for. And I'll give you a clue that the book of James is in the New Testament. So if someone is there helping you with your Bible, you're going to the New Testament. Can you see mine right here, how it says the New Testament? And I'm looking for the book of James, and here it is right here. When I scroll over in this Bible, not necessarily in yours, in this Bible, James starts on page 967. Whew, that's a big number. So pause the video if you need to, to get to the book of James. Once you're there, we're going right near the beginning. So James 1, so that might be a big number one, and verse five. So I want everybody to see what James chapter one and verse five says. So if you don't have a Bible or an app, that's okay. Cause I'm gonna bring the verse up on the screen right now. Okay, and here is what it says. Just listen the first time. If any of you need wisdom, ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone. He doesn't find fault. Did you hear that? Did you hear that when you need wisdom, the only thing you have to do is ask God for it? and he'll give it to you because he wants to? Oh, that is so cool. You know, this is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. And it's because I know that a lot of times I don't know what I'm supposed to do. And I really want to do, try and do the things that God wants me to do. So I know, because that verse tells me to, that I need to ask God and he'll show me. So I just love that verse. And I hope this month throughout August, you'll get that verse not only in your head, but in your heart and something that you can remember. This has been a wonderful service today, friends. And I would really love to pray for us before we go. So will you join me? Okay, I'm gonna put my hands together and I'm going to close my eyes and bow my head because that helps me concentrate on God. So you can join me in that way if you want to but you don't have to because when you pray to God, it doesn't matter if your eyes are open or closed or your hands are clasped together or not. If your head is bowed, you can talk to God anytime. But today, this is how I'm gonna concentrate on God. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for teaching us about wisdom. Thank you that you showed us when you were here on earth that as children, and as adults, we need to always continue to grow in our wisdom. We need to always keep finding out what we should do 
and then do it. And that's what wisdom really is. I am so thankful for that lesson and for our verse this month from the book of James. I'm also thankful that it's summertime and the sun is shining and sometimes it's raining, but it's just wonderful to be able to be outside. And I thank you that we're getting closer and closer to being able to join together in person on site at our local churches. God, thank you for all my friends and their family that have joined us today. And I pray that we would go ahead this week growing in wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody. I'm so glad you came. Next week, you're going to see Cody right here instead of me, but I'll see you the week after that. Okay? Take care. Bye-bye.